Hi, my name is Muhammad Bilal, and I am an advanced endoscopy fellow at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center with Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. I want to thank the Gastrointestinal Endoscopy GIE Journal for an opportunity to talk about our recent publication entitled Non-Variceal Upper Gastrointestinal Hemorrhage After Percutaneous Coronary Intervention for Acute Myocardial Infarction, a national analysis over 11 months. As we all know that coronary artery disease is the leading cause of mortality in the United States. Acute myocardial infarction, uh, whether it is ST elevation myocardial infarction or non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, uh, myocardial infarction is uh, treated by percutaneous coronary intervention, which is now the gold standard for treatment of myocardial infarction. The American Heart Association recommends dual antiplatelet therapy for at least 12 months following PCI for percutaneous coronary intervention with drug-eluting stent placement to reduce the risk of ischemic complications. Uh, given that non variceal upper GI bleeding is a feared complication in patients on dual antiplatelet therapy. In acute myocardial infarction, uh, PCI is mostly an emergent procedure, but in other indications for PCI, we oftentimes get a call from our cardiology colleagues to help risk stratify patients for upper GI bleeding prior to undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention. This was why we thought that this study um, is important since it will provide some helpful epidemiological data in this patient population. Uh, previously, some studies have reported both a 30-day as well as six-month incidence of non variceal upper GI bleeding um, after PCI, but since most of these patients will stay on dual antiplatelet therapy for at least one year nowadays, uh, we thought that this would be valuable information for us to have. For this study, we used the 2014 National Readmission Database, or the NRD. This is part of the Healthcare Resource Utilization Project from the Agency of Healthcare Research and Quality. It is the largest publicly available all-pair inpatient um, healthcare readmission database in the United States. We included all patients who had a principal diagnosis of ST elevation and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction who underwent an in-hospital uh, PCI and were admitted in January of 2014. The reason we included the patients who were admitted in January is so that we could have data for the remainder 11 months of the calendar year and hence be able to calculate a one-year or 11-month follow-up incidence on these patients. The primary outcome of this study was the 11-month incidence of non variceal upper GI bleeding in this population. Um, we had a few secondary outcomes um, that were 11-month mortality rate following non variceal upper GI hemorrhage, non variceal upper GI hemorrhage-associated morbidity, um, impact of non variceal upper GI hemorrhage on resource utilization, um, length of stay, total hospital costs, and then we also tried to identify independent predictors um, of non-variceal upper GI hemorrhage. Um, and we identified by them by performing a multivariable regression analysis to adjust for uh, possible confounding factors. The 11-month incidence of uh, non-variceal upper GI hemorrhage was 1.6%. Um, this means that roughly one to two patients who undergo percutaneous coronary intervention for acute myocardial infarction are likely to have a non-variceal upper GI bleed in a one-year time period. 50% of these bleeds happened within the first 90 days of discharge from the acute myocardial infarction hospitalization. A majority of the patients, approximately 63% of these patients, needed at least one unit of packed red blood cell transfusions. In the patients who did develop non variceal GI bleeding, um, they had significantly higher odds of mortality with an odds ratio of 1.9 as compared to those who did not have bleeding. The independent predictors of developing a non variceal upper GI bleed uh, in this patient population were female gender, Charlson comorbidity index, and length of stay. Um, so our study really highlights that understanding the risk factors for non variceal upper GI bleeding and determining which ones are potentially modifiable is really key to help guide interventions and eventually um, decrease the associated mortality and morbidity uh, that comes with it. Um, our study has some limitations that we have outlined in detail in the paper. However, there are a few that are worth mentioning here. Um, it is a retrospective study using an administrative database, and thus it is susceptible to inaccurately entered or uh, missing codes. Um, 
The other thing is that the NRD database does not use uh, capture the use of medications and thus we were unable to directly evaluate the effect of specific medications such as different kinds of antiplatelet agents, uh, whether patients were on um, NSAIDs in addition to being on dual antiplatelet therapy or anticoagulation agents, as well as if they were on a proton pump inhibitor or H2 blockers. Uh, finally, the, uh, the, the mortality associated with non versial upper GI bleeding that we present is probably an underestimate of the true mortality rate. This is because the NRD uh, captures in-hospital mortality, and thus patients who died at home en route to the hospital or in the emergency department could potentially be missed. Um, despite this, I think in summary, our study provides valuable epidemiological data um, on the one-year incidence of non versial upper GI bleeding after percutaneous intervention for acute myocardial infarction. Uh, given that this is using a national database, the results are generalizable as compared to a single center study. Um, even though the incidence of non versial upper GI bleed over a year is 1.6% among these patients, but the patients um, who do have upper GI bleed, the outcomes including mortality, morbidity, and healthcare resource utilization are significantly worse. Therefore, I think it's important that we need more efforts in identifying patients at risk for developing non versial upper GI bleed, um, so targeting interventions um, can be performed in these patients to prevent upper GI bleed. Um, I hope that you will enjoy reading our study. Um, thank you once again.